Should I say something more? Good morning, everyone. Let's start our Tuesday class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Parbrahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Om Bhubhava Swaha Tatsavitra Varenayam Bargo Deva Sedhi Mahi Diyo Yonaha Prachodayat Astoma Sadgamya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamya Mrityorma Amritam Gamya Om Sehna Vavtu Sehna Bhunaktu Saviryam Karvavahi Tejasvi Navadit Mastu Ma Vidvishavahi Om Shanti 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 Om Let's open our Mahabharat books. Page number 271. And this is a beginning of Dron Parva. And Dron is a the name of that Acharya, Dronacharya, who taught, who was a teacher of all the Pandavas and the Kaurvas, the cousins. But he's fighting on the side of the Kaurvas. So now he is the Senapati. So that's why this chapter says Drona Senapati. We saw that Vishampitama, the grandfather, he got defeated by Arjuna. And he's lying in Kurukshetra on the bed of arrows. Okay. So the 11th morning of the war dawns, cold and clear, and despair grips the Kaurav army. As long as Bhishma had led them, they could always win the war. Now he lay on his strange deathbed, waiting for the sun to return to his northern path. As Sanjay said to his stricken king, blind Dhritarashtra, the core of army is like the sky without a sun, the earth without its verdure, speech without refinement, a woman who has lost her husband, a dry river in summer, like a mountain cave empty of its lion and his roar. As naturally at seasons change, when their times come, the Kauravs turn to current for assurance. On that 11th morning of the war of Dharam, the army of Hastinapur resounds not with blasting conches or drum rolls, but a single name cried out by a million throats. Karan, they roar, Karan to beat the Pandavas. In his tent, Karan hears them with a grim smile, he's putting on mail, readying himself for battle. Duryodhan and his brothers arrive in Karan's tent. Duryodhan puts his arms around him and begins to cry again as do all Dhritarashtra's sons. Karan comforts them like an older brother. <clears throat> Nothing is certain in this fleeting world. Not when we live or die. Bhishma has fallen when all of you guarded him with your lives. When Dron and Ashwatthama, Duryodhana, Krepa, Dushashan, Shalya, and a thousand others watched over him, his time had come and no power on earth could save the Pitama. Yet it is easier for you to imagine the sun fallen out of the sky. He puts his hands on Duryodhana's shoulders. I know why you have come to me this morning. Look, I have put an armor. Duryodhan here, I am ready to die for you. The enemy is powerful, righteous, Yudhishthir, tameless Bhim. Brilliant Arjun, Nakul and Sadev who fight like Devas. They have Satyaki, who is hardly less of an archer than Arjun himself, than the most formidable, if the youngest, Abhimanyu, who has both Krishan and Arjun's blood in his veins. We must not forget Drupad and the fire prince Drishdumna, whose valor no one has fathomed, and their fierce, loyal legions. This is the enemy. We would be fools if we deceived ourselves that they will be easy to vanquish. We must do our best, and if we win, the world shall be yours. If we lose, we will still have earned immortal pain for ourselves. Let us not be anxious about how the war will end, but take courage in both hands and leave the rest to fate. Let us go and fight. How his dark eyes shine. Duryodhan thinks I will not live much longer, and he is consoled. Of ambition and mercy, ambition will always rule the core of his heart. Duryodhan returns to his own tent. Karan goes again to his dying grandsire. 
Now he comes as a warrior in his chariot, wearing mail and armed. He alights and approaches Bhishma, folding his hands, he says quietly, I mean to follow you, Pitama. You have laid your life down for the Yodhan, and so will I. Bless me again. He kneels beside Bhishma. Bhishma takes his hand. You are Duryodhan's only hope. Fight as well as you can. That you must do in Kshatriya Dharam. Karan, I have thought long about you. And I have no doubt you are the greatest of all my grandsons. He lowers his voice. Let your death be as noble as you are. I bless you that your fame will live forever after you die. And it shall be blemishless. And when you fall, Kurukshetar will be like a mother's lap to you. Men of generations too distant to dream of, men in the heart of the Kali Yuga will name their sons after you. I bless you that you will die with a smile on your lips and joy in your heart. Noble Karan, after everything you have endured, you will never be born again into this world of sorrow. You will have moksha, my child. Bhisham lays a loving palm on Karan's head. Karan takes the dust from his Pitama's feet and walks back to his chariot. Splendid as his father, Karan rides up to the Kaurav army. They see him like a sun risen for them. After the fractured night, a huge cheer goes up, echoing over Kurukshetra. Karan, great Karan, for victory. Karan is with us now. How long will the Pandav sleep? A smile on his drawn face, Duryodhan welcomes his friend, taking his hands. You tell me what we should do next. My mind is dark with grief and I cannot reason clearly. We must have a Senapati for our army, but I can't think who it must be. Adroitly, he leaves the decision to Karan. Karan says, all these Kshatriyas are fit for the charge. Each is the end, other's fear. But if you choose one, the others will feel slighted. Yet is there a fight warrior among us who towers over the rest in both age and experience? Only he can command respect from us all. Duryodhan, let Dron be your Senapati. Duryodhan goes to his master. Acharya, you have been as close to us as our Pitama. It is only just that his mental passes to you. I beg you, assume command of the army of Hastinapur. Dron, the Brahman, is pleased no end. He says, I will lead your army as best I as I can. Duryodhan calls for holy water and Drona is consecrated Senapati of the Kaurav army. When Karan stands beside the Acharya, the soldiers feel a surge of hope. They say Karan is a better archer than Arjun. He can win this war for us. Remember the tournament in Hastinapur. He showed he was the better bowman. He has no love for the Pandavas. As Bhishma did, he will kill them for Duryodhan. Dron deploys his soldiers in the shut the view, phalanx of the card, while the rich human forms the crunch view once more. The Pandavas fear across Kurukshetra at some excitement among the core of legions. They see Karan, bright as a god, take the field for the first time. He is as pure, as radiant as the sun springing from the dragon Rahu's mouth. Before he rides to the van of his army, Dron says to Duryodhan, I will fight all the Pandas, but there is one man I will not face. One Kshatriya you must shield me from, for he was born to kill me. Drisht Dhuman, my lord, keep Drupad's fire prince away from me if you want me to stay alive. The Guru smiles at his shishya. I will not pretend I am not delighted to be your Senapati. I want to do something exceptional for you to show my gratitude. Duryodhan reflects on this for just a moment before he says, can you take Yudhishthir captive and bring him to me alive? Drone's eyes flash. If you mean to kill him, let it be in battle, not by deceit. Duryodhan laughs. Oh no, Acharya, would Arjun spare our lives for an hour if I did that? And even if we kill all the Pandavas, Krishna will burn us with his chakra. No, if you bring Yudhishthir to me, I will challenge him to another game of dice. He will lose and we can send him and his brothers to the jungle again and end this war. Drone considers this and likes it even less than the war, but he must keep the word he has given. If you can lure Arjun away, I will bring Yudhishtha to you. Duryodha knows how fond these acharyas of the Pandavas. To hold him to his word, he has it proclaimed 
to their army that Dron will take Yudhishthir alive. The news travels quickly to the Pandavas. Arjun cries in fury, have the great sunk so low, but we shall see how they take my brother when I won't leave his side for a moment. Next chapter, the 11th day. The conscious boom again, Hisham shuts his eyes and drifts away on a vision of another world. The Kaurav army whirls into battle, a great wheel of men. The Pandav's crunch swoops to stop. It's a spinning advance. Sahadev, who has sworn to kill Shakuni, meets him in a duel, storming up at the head of the Pandav force today. Drisht Dhuman confronts Drone before any other Kaurav warrior can intervene. Duryodhan's brother, Vimitsati, rides a state at Bhim, but he does not take him unawares. With a roar, Bhim charges Vimitsati, killing his horses, shattering his chariot, and the Korov flees on foot. Burishus faces Shikhandi. To Shikhandi, this is the first day of a new life. Nothing remains of Amba's steaming memories of her single obsession. Serenity sits on the Panchal, prince's heart, son of a great father that he is. He gives Burish a scorching fight, turning the heads of the soldiers around them. Some way of black, the Totkach, and pale green-eyed Alambush are locked in a battle of sorcery. They fight with Maya, crying chillingly at each other in the tongue of wild Rakshas. Dark curses that no one else can understand. The Avanti brothers, Wind and Anuvind, meet Chekitan in a fervid duel. Blood flies in the day's young sun and the spotless sky echoes with the screams of those cut down. After ten days of war, a skin of dry blood covers Kurukshetra and fresh crimson splashes brightly and onto this russet patina. Virat is the first Pandav warrior to face Karan in battle. Holding their breath, the Kaurav soldiers watch to see if their new hero is indeed the archer they have heard he is. He exceeds all their expectations. His hands are like light. His aim is unerring and he is more fluent than Arjun. It seems he only looks at an enemy and arrows flare from his bow by themselves. A deep roar of excitement rises from the Kaurav. Ransom. Yet another Kshatriya eclipses even Karana, Abhimanyu. He hunts like a Gandharav on Kurukshetra and no one can stand before him. Breaking easily through the rim of Shakatvyu, he kills a hundred Kaurava soldiers. Duryodhan's warrior, the king, Pururav, surprises Abhimanyu from a flank. Smashing his bow, Abhimanyu draws his sword and leaps down from his chariot, seizing Kaurav by his hair. Arjun's sons lifts him into the air and flings him down to the ground. Sword in hand, Jadrath comes to challenge Abhimanyu. The prince is eager to show off his sword skills. On the ground between their two chariots, they hew at each other, their weapons ringing together in an first sense of sparks. Jadrath is a fine swordsman, but though he has twice Abhimanyu's bulk, the slender prince bears him back with the dazzling speed. He breaks Jadrat's blade, that king runs back to his chariot. Word spread of Abhimanyu's havoc. Back in his chariot, the prince picks up his bow again, and a rash of arrows leaps from it. One Kauru warrior matches Abhimanyu's shafts for shaft. Shalya harries him. They fight a blinding duel. Shalya invokes an astra, burning with secret fires. The missile flames at Abhimanyu. Arjun's son catches it in his hands. In a wink, Abhimanyu fits it to his bowstrings and shoots it back at Shalya. The Astra explodes, killing Shalya's Sarathi, consuming his chariot and flinging him out. Unhurt but dazed and furious, Shalya seizes up a mace and runs at Abhimanyu. The slight youth cannot hope to match the massive. Shalya with his weapon. Yet honor demands that he fight as Abhimanyu helps his own Gada. Another Kshatriya arrives between Shalya and him, roaring the challenge. It is Bhim swinging his mace. Shalya turns away from Abhimanyu to the equal opponent. Like a tiger and an elephant, they circle each other. The soldiers around them step back to give them room. Shalya and Bhim battle like 
beasts out of a mythic wilderness. Their maces clash like earthquakes and storms of blue sparks fly around them. And they look like trees covered by fireflies at twilight. For an hour they fight exhilaratingly, neither gives an inch, smashing out wildly and also with superb control. Until with the loudest roar of the day, he crashes such a blow on Shalya's mace that the king's weapon ignites in his hands. Bhim's next blow takes Shalya on his head. Shalya's knees buckle. Out of nowhere, Krithvarman appears, sweeps the fallen Kshatriya into his chariot and lifts away. Lusty cheering breaks out among the Pandav soldiers. The moral victory has been theirs and Shalya has escaped death by a whisker. Karan's son, Rishen, takes the field with his father today and he is a sudden comet appeared on Kurukshetra. Nakul's son, Satanika, faces Rishisen. He can hardly match Karan's ferocious boy, seeing him in mortal danger. Draupadi's other sons come flying to their brother's rescue. Like five sun flares, they attack Rishisen, beating him back. Then Ashwatthama appears at his side and together those two Hold the Pandav Putras at bay. But how graceful the five are, how handsome. This eleventh day, the Karvas have lost many more soldiers than the Pandavas. No Bhisham holds up Pandu sons anymore. And Bhim, Abhimanyu, Satyaki, Drishtadiman, and Arjun devastate the enemy. To stop them, somehow to turn the tide on his first day as Senapatiya Fastana, whose army, Drone thinks he must take Yudhishthira captain. He sees the eldest Pandav lighting on his own, the fighting on his own, with Arjun nowhere near him. Drone cries to his Sarthi, right at the white parasol, go like the wind. They fly at Yudhishthira's chariot, Drone's bow streams, five fires, and no army soldiers dare stand before him. In a moment, they are upon Yudhishthira. The Pandav turns to fight, but he is hardly a match for Drone with surprise on his side. The Acharya breaks his bow. He rides at Yudhishthira's chariot, but Drishtadiman, who misses nothing, flashes between them. Arrows fly like locusts between the chariots. With wonderful skill and some fear as well, Drishtadiman contains Drone as a sure to see. Shikhandi and Utmanuj are at hand. Drone beats them back in the frenzy that takes him. Draupadi's sons try to intervene, but they cannot stand even a few moments against the raging Acharya. He is possessed. His students see him like this for the first time. Ever. Drishtaduman sees the peril to Yudhishthira and fights desperately. But he and his warriors are being pushed back inexorably, farther and farther and farther from the Pandav camp. The Pandav soldiers panic. Someone cries, the war is lost. No one can stop Drone. He will take Yudhishthira today. Drone's chariot comes nearer and Yudhishthira waits helplessly to be killed or taken by his master. Suddenly a cry splits the arrow thick air. The rumble of a great chariot drowns every other noise. Pale Gandharav horses seem to fly above the, above the ground. Their reins held taut in the dark hands of an avatar. The shimmering chariot appears out of the dusk and at the last moment darts between Yudhishthira and Drone. In its wake, it leaves a thousand dead. So in the gloom, it seems like some uncanny ship folding a lake of blood. Arjun falls on Drone like an army. In Arjun's mind, turbulent images rise. First of a day when a stranger fetched a little width out of an old well for some young, princes, then of Bhishan fallen just yesterday, and finally another day, 14 years ago, when he and his brothers lost everything, how could his Acharya be an accomplice to such tragedy? After all that had happened, how could he now stoop to this? In that moment, Arjun loses a reverence he has nurtured over a lifetime. Dron had been brought, bought with position, and he falls in his shishya's eyes. Blind with anger and even more with grief, Arjun flies at his master who taught him so much of what he knows. Drone cannot face him. 
The Pandav shames his guru on Kurukshetra, driving him off like some common soldier. The Acharya's opportunity to take Yudhishthira is lost. Worse, he knows he has lost Arjun's respect. The sun sets in sorrow over the field of the dead. Conchi's sound to call the armies back to their camps. Though Drone has fought as never before, the 11th day also belongs to the Pandavas, if narrowly. Next chapter, Sushara. Duryodhan is frantic. In front of the other kings and his brothers, he says to Drona, you asked me if you could do something exceptional for me, and I told you to take Yudhishthar alive. You had every chance to take him today, but Acharya, you didn't keep your word. Drona bristles at the sanction. He says coldly, I said I would take Yudhishthar if Arjun was far from him. The task of keeping Arjun away was yours. If Arjun had not descended on me, Yudhishthar would be here now, bound hand and foot. Susharam says, we Trigrats have old enemy, enmity with Arjun. All these days we have tried to kill him, but his blue sarthi is as elusive as the wind in the trees. Tomorrow we will challenge Arjun as soon as battle begins and lure him away to the south of the field. There, either he or we will die. Drone should have all the time he needs to take with Krishna. Duryodhan cries, an excellent plan. And if you can kill Arjun while the Acharya captures Yudhishthir, not even Christian will deny us victory. But to make resolutions here in the safety of the camp is easy. I have seen you face Arjun many times, Susharam, and each time you Trigrats fled from him. Susharam's face twitches. We will swear an oath by Agni that either Arjun or the Trigrats will live at twilight tomorrow, but not both. At once Duryodhan orders the sacred fire fetched. The Trigrat brothers, Susharan, Satyarath, Satyavaram, Satyash, Subahu, Sudhav, and Satyadharam swear a solemn oath that they would not leave the field of war unless either Arjun or they were dead. With this oath, they are called the Samsapataks. After the Grim brothers return to their tents, Duryodhan says to Duron, with Arjun out of the way, I hope you won't bark at taking with Hishtar tomorrow. Drone says woodenly, if Arjun is kept away, I will bring Yudhishthir to you alive. He also walks out of the Ryodhan stand, disgusted at what noble war has come to, at what he himself has fallen to. Duryodhan smiles at Shakuni, Tushasha, and Kara. Dawn of the twelfth day, Duryodhan, uh, Drone founds his legions in the Garud view, and across the field, Drish Diman has chosen the Chandrakala, the phalanx of the crescent moon. Battle begins, the two forces fall at each other, arrows cover the sky, fingers of orange flames in the early light. Swords and maces gleam in the morning, and again Bhishma on his arrow bed hears the roar and the scream of the slayer and the slayer. Arjun sees Sushiram and his brothers with their men at the southern wing tip of the coral eagle. Usually they would come from the rear as the day's battle grew. He sees all their burning gazes fixed just on him. He sees Duryodhan staring intently at the trickets and guesses what is afoot. Arjun says to Yudhishthir, the trickets mean to challenge me again and I cannot refuse to fight them. As he speaks, Susharam hails him harshly across the field. Arjun, come and fight us. We have sworn by Agni that today either you or we, but not both, will live to see the sunset. We are the Sampatats, Arjun, and we challenge you. Yudhishthir is alarmed. You must stay beside me, Arjun. I don't care to be taken by Dron. I cannot refuse a Kshatriya's challenge, but here is Satyajit. Let him be your custodian today. As long as he has life in him, none or anyone will come near you. But if he should be killed, Yudhishthir promise me, my brother, that you will be a coward for all our sakes and flee. Drone will not take me, Arjun, answer Susharan's challenge. Let this be the Trigrat's last day on earth. Bless me, cries Arjun. 
leaving Yudhishthir in the care of Satyajit, who is Durpat's brother and no less a Kshatriya than him. Arjun says to Krishna, come, my lord, let us ride at the three points. Next chapter, Bhagdatsa Elephant. An army by themselves, the Trigrats have formed a crescent of their own beyond the southern wing tip of the Garud view. Arjun rides alone against the legion of thousands, like a lion at the vast herd of deer. Duryodhan sees Arjun's white horses flying like foam across a wave and cries to Drona. Our plan is working. Arjun rides at Sushyam's men. Take Yudhishthir, Acharya, no one can stop you now. Sushyam has brought his legion to the south, a fair way beyond the main corps of army. From here, Arjun will not be able to ride back in a hurry to his brother's side. They are so far that he will not be able to hear a call for help. As they draw near, Arjun turns to Krishna. Do you see the smiles on their savage faces? Are they so glad I will send them to hell that they smile? Arjun lifts his devdatta, adorned with gold, and blows a deep note on it. For a moment, the Trigrit force stands paralyzed. Their horses' eyes bulge wildly, and the beasts pass, dung in fear. Then a thousand conches bass answers his call. A thousand arrows flash at his servant, obscuring the face of the sun. Arjun replies with an astra that subsumes up a calid fireball then falls on the enemy in a hundred burning shafts. Every arrow claims a life. A hundred trigger soldiers are immolated. The triggers have sworn a solemn vow, wow, and they shoot back, bank upon bank of dark arrows at Krishna and Arjun, falling on them like a swarms of bees upon a flowering tree, engulfing them because of Krishna's chariotry and the white horse's speed. The pond of chariot is a hard target to find. Their finer marksman's barbs Arjun cuts down with his own fire. One of the Trigrit's bravest Kshatriyas, Subahu of the Gifted Hands, rides out of the throng to face Arjun alone. He is an excellent poor man and wounds both Krishna and Arjun. Roaring Arjun breaks the bow in Subahu's hand, then severs the hand from its wrist in a red font. Screaming in horror, Subahu flees. Susharam himself dashes forward with ten of his truest archers, but Arjun is a warrior of another ilk. As in a nightmare, Susharam sees Sudhanav's head cut from his neck by the Pandav's golden winged apple, its scream stilled on its lips. Turning, he sees the other nine around him have met the same fate in the space of wish. Arjun fights as if from another dimension, where he has all the time he needs to shoot at the enemy while he is protected from their arrows. By a threshold they cannot breach, he seems to defy nature. His one to their thousand is more than they can subdue. He burns them at will. The common triggered soldiers panic and want to run back to the main core of army. Susharam roars at them. Stand and fight, cowards. You have sworn to kill or to be killed. I will shoot you down myself if you run. And he sends a few warning arrows after the deserters. So they scramble back to the descent. Susharam cries, shoot all at once. Cover them in a night of arrows. The wind whistles towards Arjun from behind the triggered legion. And suddenly a dark cloud of arrows drifts at him as if at midday an unnatural night has fallen over Kurukshetra. It is an endless cloud. The Trigrats now shoot in waves and in terror so they can hide in the darkness from the Pandav. Such an impenetrable darkness, Arjun can hardly see his hands. In fury, he summons his first greater Astra, the weapon of Tvashtar. He loses that missile then blows a rolling blast on the dead tiger. The Vashtar's astra is a weapon of hallucinations. Every trigger soldier sees the Pandav beside him. They fall on each other, thinking they are attacking Arjun. Thousands die in a surreal confusion, cut down by their comrades. Those that are not killed, Arjun picks off. 
Yet the darkness persists around the white chariot. For the Trigrath brothers themselves are masters of Maya and they are not deluded by the Astra. The heavy darkness afflicts Christian at the chariot head. He feels exhausted. So he can hardly hold the reins in his hands. His body is drenched in sweat. The blindness films his eyes. In that airy night, Krishna cries, Arjun, where are you? I cannot see you in this accursed blackness. Are you still alive, Arjun? Answer me. A roar of anger answers the avatar. Dimly, Krishna hears the kshatriya behind him invoke the why we the, the wind's weapon. He sees an arrow glowing in the sinister dark, a shaft charged with a thousand stones. Next moment, the golden arrow flashes out in the unnatural night and a hurricane sweeps Kurukshetra. Like the sun, it dissolves the darkness of the Trigrath cloud. It also blows away whole columns of soldiers as they are dry leaves of summer. The gale of the Vaive Astra blows the Trigrath across the plain of war. Beautiful, they seem like flights of it. Birds. His enemy hopelessly scattered for the moment, Arjun cries to Krishna, I fear the Acharya. We must ride back to Yudhishthira. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, as soon as the drone saw Arjun ride against Sushan, he makes straight for Yudhishthira. Drone knows the Trigvats will not hold Arjun for long. Drishtiman is beside Yudhishthira. The Pandav cries to Drupad Sasan, Here comes Drone. He must not take me. The fire prince laughs. I am beside you, my lord, and my father Sarni is here with the Satyajit. Dhruvan can promise Duryodhan anything he likes, but he will not keep his word. We will make him pay for it. Dhruvan arrives at the outer ring of the warriors who guard Yudhishthira and sees Dhrishtivan riding at him. He swerves away from the encounter. Drupad's army surrounds Dhruvan, shooting at him from every side. Durmuk, the ugly Kaurav, one of the Duryodhan's fiercest brothers, rides at Drishtiman. Drishtiman fights him and also shoots smoking shafts at Dron. Durmuk fights as if for his life today and contains Drishtiman. He loses a renitent astra at Drishtiman. For a moment, Drupad's army is dazzled. Seeing his chance, Dron flits through the protective ring. Dron is dangerously close to Yudhishthira when Satyajit sees him stiffly as a lion come to pounce on a calf, separated from the herd. The Acharya stalks his royal prey. Satyajit veers his chariot around and attacks Dron. The Brahman roused is more than he can contain. In a flash, Dron cuts Satyajit's bow in two and plunges on at Yudhishthira. Drupad's other brother, Vrik flies between Dron and the Pandav king. Dron finds Vrik's heart with a wooden arrow and that Kshatriya falls dead from his chariot. Satyajit seizes up another bow and sets on Dron. Now Satyajit breaks Dron's bow in his hand and fills the Acharya Sarthi with a silver shaft that transfixes him to the chariot head. Dron's time is short. He pulls a crescent-tipped arrow from his quiver and sever Satyajit's head from his neck, scarlet spouting at the naked part. Panic takes the Pandav army. The Kakes, Virat, and some more of the Drupad's brothers rush to where Drone closes ominously on Yudhishthira. Virat's brothers, Satyanika, sets his chariot between Drone and Yudhishthira. Growling, Drone decapitates him two in a flash of blood. Drone has killed three Kshatriyas in a few moment, and the Pandav soldiers shrink from him. He flares on towards Yudhishthira. Shikhandi, Vasudhan, and Satyaki challenge the Acharya. He beats them back easily with fire-headed arrows that kindle their chariots. Yet the few moments for which the three held Drone up are fateful. Yudhishthira leaps nimbly from his chariot. He mounts his swiftest horse he can find and flees the battle. When Drone realizes his quarry has escaped, it is too late for him to give chase. He turns on the Pandav army around him and they feel his wrath. Today, Drone fights as if to prove that he is more than Bhishma's equal. There is a bloodbath again on Kurukshetra. 
more copious than any before. Many of the Drupad's brothers and Drishtyaman stormed back to fight Dron, the old master, his white hair flying in the wind of death that blows on that field, is stainless. He kills thousands, their blood falling like rain upon the caked earth. Drone finds the prince, Suchitra's heart with a serpentine nourish. All around, Pandav soldiers cry, kill Drone, kill Drone, or the war is lost. Who can kill the Acharya? In a brief hour alone, he routs all the Pandav army. A way of Duryodhan stands with Karan at the heart of the Kauravan legions, which have hardly any fighting to do for the slaughter Drone takes to the enemy. His eyes shining, Duryodhan cries to Karan. Look at him, scatter them. Drisht Dhimman and the rest flee from him. Look at Bhim Ran. He roars with laughter. The Pandavas will forget their dreams of a kingdom. They will hardly hope to live through the day. But with the queerest look at his eye, Karan replies, don't belittle your enemy too quickly. Duryodhan. These are Kshatriyas. They will not be beaten so easily. Look where Bhim comes to fight. His eyes red as plums. And look at the rest streaming back after him. We must ride to the Acharya. He is in danger. Duryodhan glances sharply at his friend, startled at the warmth in his voice for the Pandavas. Then he sees the throne surrounded and rides to his Senapati with Karan and some of his brothers. A sharp battle breaks out. Nakul and Sahadev are twins incarnations of death. Behind them, the sons are implacable. And away to the right, Abhimanyu is the most terrible of all. The Pandavas fight in great heart after Yudhishthir escapes the realm. Farther away to the left of Abhimanyu, game elemental as his airy father, is among Duryodhan's elephants, tormenting them with arrows, smashing them down with his mace, as is commonplace for him by now. Then to avenge all his kind, that Bhim slew, comes a white beast, a titan among elephants. Bhagdatsa Supritha bears down on the sun of the wind. Like Indra mounted on Aravat, comes that ancient mountain demon, Narkasur's son, and Aravat's son, Supritha, charges Bhim's chariot. The Pandava army parts like the sky for a day of soldiers helpless enough to come in his way. He tramples as if they were hardly there at all, enjoying himself among the Ryodhan's lesser beasts. Bhim does not see Supritik until the immense creature is upon him. With a shrill scream at the sight of the corpses of the other elephants, Bhim has held. Supritik lifts a gigantic foot and brings it down thunderously up on Bhim's chariot. The wrath is smashed, the horses bolt, winning the Sarthi. Vishok is pulp and Bhim himself nowhere to be seen. Supritik raises his pale trunk and trumpets his triumph. The sound rings across Kurukshetra. A cry of anguish goes up from the Pandav soldiers. Supritik has killed Bhim. The Pandav, meanwhile, is under the Macedon's, dazed but unhurt. Sensing him there, the beast begins to settle on its stomach to crush him as it's Healy bulk descends on him. Bhim, who knows something about elephants from his boyhood, begins to rub its belly furiously with his hands. Supritik cannot resist this. For a moment, all the rage flies out of him, and he basks in the sweet tickling. In a trice, Bhim escapes between his legs and runs for his life. Hearing the awful cry that Bhim was dead, Yudhishthir flies back into battle with the Drupad's army, like the god of wrath, he comes, bow singing. The lord of the, the Sharans comes with Yudhishthir, bringing his great-hearted elephant, which stood up so bravely to Supritik. But Bhagdat and his beast are denizens of a lofty realm that borders Devlo, and Yudhishthir's most ferocious valleys fall away from them like raindrops. Bhagdat is an endless font of all kinds of mysteries, some common, other sorcerous. Columns of men he burns up in an eye flash with blazing javelins that explode with enormous violence. There are hypnotic arrows full of haunting music. 
which lulls Yudhishthir soldiers into dreams. They stand stupefied, forgetting where they are and are easy picking for the Kaurav archers. Satyaki rides against the Lord of Pragyotishpeta. The Yadav covers elephant and rider in a hum of arrows like dark bees. Supritik charges Satyaki's chariot and once more smashes it in splinters with a stamp Satyaki leaps out just in time. But another roar shakes the field and Bhim returns to face the white elephant. He fetches Supritik a staggering blow with his mace. Quick as anything, the creature darts out its trunk, seizes Bhim and lifts him high above its head. The elephant is about to dash Bhim on the ground. When with great presence of mind, Bhim stabs its soft trunk with an arrowhead. The animal screams and loses, loosens his grip for an instant, which is time enough for Bhim to wriggle free and leap down. Supritik lifts a leg wider than the bowl of a tree to stomp on him. Bhim darts under the creature's belly again and stabs him from below. It runs round and round in a fever but cannot find its tormentor. Giving up, Supritik sees Abhimanyu's chariot before him and charges it. Bhim leaps out from the, between its legs, but Abhimanyu is not quick enough to pull his horses out of Supritik's way. The white giant crushes his chariot and the prince himself jumps free at the last moment. It is an unusual battle being fought on Kurukshetra the Pandav army against Supritik, the elephant. The elephant surely has the better of it. He keeps the enemy army at bay, crushing so many chariots, trampling any, ma any men who come in his way, holding up Bhim while Bhagat on his neck shows death all around him in a scarlet flurry. Panic grips the Pandavas and their soldiers' cries ring plentifully across and this will continue in the next chapter also. And an ancient and his beast. So we look that look at that with next week. Let's end this class with this mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachete Purnase Purnamadai Purnameva Vasheshate Om Shan. Shanti, shanti. Thank you very much.